Hey guys, another box has shown up today and I think it has a TV lamp in it. I have also picked up a number of antennas over the past few months so I think it's time for another installment of TV lamps and antennas. First up I'm going to open this box and see what's inside. There were two pictures in the listing for this item on eBay and they were both a little vague as to the actual appearance. But it was fairly inexpensive and I kind of like to gamble a little on eBay sometimes. I like to be surprised by what I get. Hopefully I won't be surprised by a box of broken pottery there. <laughs> Look, it's broken. Alright. Well, that's different. It's kind of cool. S strange about this is, well, let's see, it's a shell of sorts. Uh, Nautilus or bivalve, I'm not sure exactly what they call these. So the bulb goes down in there under switch so this must be the back but that means the light gets kind of projected forward whereas normally on TV lamps the light is behind it's projected against the wall behind the item to give it some backlighting so I'm kind of curious to see how this would actually look in practice of course it's not it's not, not it's not necessarily a TV lamp just because it's ceramic and vintage and has a light socket and it doesn't mean it's necessarily a TV lamp it could just be a lamp but uh, well, I'll get a bulb out and see if it fires up and we'll see how it looks the cord looks sound I don't see any breaks in it or kinks or cracked insulation so I screwed in a bulb and tried to turn it on but nothing happened so Taking a closer look, I think it just might be that the center contact on that socket is just so filthy and corroded it's not making good electrical contact. So, time to bring this into the workshop. I pulled out a multimeter, put it on the ohms range, clipped one end to the power cord and the other to the outer ring here, and I've got conductivity there. It's a little flaky though, I think. Uh, it's also a problem with this corroded plug here, so I'll polish up that brass a little bit. Now for the other conductor. It's a little hard to get down in here. I think I'll just use the probe tip itself. Infinity. Try wiggling that a little to clean up the contact. Still infinity. Maybe I've got the switch turned the wrong way. Hmm, still infinity. Oh, there we go. 53 ohms kind of high, so I'm just going to polish up both the plug and the connector down there as best I can and give this another try. I've polished up the plug with this abrasive pad. I think these are made for um, stripping furniture, but I like to use them on metal sometimes because unlike steel wool, these don't have metal fibers. So when you use it on electronics, like say polishing a chassis or something, you're not going to get metal fibers that might fall in there and short something out. I also cleaned up the contact inside there and screwed in a light bulb, so I'm going to plug this in. Yeah, let's give this a try. Yeah, I was playing around with this before I started recording, and the switch is definitely flaky. But, if I carefully turn it, I can get it to stay on. So, I'll definitely either take that switch apart and try cleaning it, or I'll just replace it altogether. I'm going to put a smaller wattage ball, bring it back in the other room, and uh, let's see how it looks. Okay, I put a little bit softer bulb in there, a small little round guy, and see how that goes. A 
So, yeah, it's like I was saying, it's kind of odd. It projects the light forward. So I guess, it, I, th I think I call it more of a night light than a TV lamp. It's a TV lamp you'd want to be facing like that. But that's not very attractive. <laughs> you see the switch in the corner, if nothing else. I'm going to try the smallest little bulbs I got here and see how that looks. And finally, here it is with a little 7.5 watt bulb. Looks nice, I think. So TV lamp or not, I like it. It's a cool design. Maybe I'll use it for a, uh, a night light in the hallway somewhere. Now, as for antennas. Okay, in a previous video I showed you these two UHF antennas. Well, since then I got two more. I got this little guy, which has two aluminum kind of rabbit ears that stick out, a little Bakelite ball, and a cast iron base. Not nice, I think. And then there's this guy, which I really, really like. I was surprised that nobody else bid on this. It's made by JFD. They made, they made a lot of antennas back in the day. Also has a nice cast iron base, nice big Bakelite body, brass bolt going through, holding it together, and then this nice anodized aluminum ring. It's in really good shape. This can tilt back and forth. Next up, I've got a trio of Delta Beam antennas. Delta Beam antennas are notable because they have this very distinct styling where there's a corkscrew element in the middle and then arms that uh, bend up and down. This is the first one I got. It was off of a Craigslist listing. I was quite surprised to find one local. It's got a switch in the base to switch different elements in and out to help you tune stations in. Base is just plastic. And all of these elements, I believe, are aluminum. Some type of coating. I don't think it's anodized. More like a sort of a, a shellac or lacquer coating. These arms, as I said, bend. And they are telescoping. One bad thing on this one was uh, these, these end caps on the ends of the arms here didn't look quite right to me. Upon closer inspection, I realized what these actually are, are the caps from an inner tube, like for a bicycle. <laughs> this next one has the correct original ones. These next two I got off of eBay. This one I had, had a few other bidders, but uh, I was the top dog in the end. Also has a switch in the base here for different elements, same corkscrews in here. And these are the real end caps, so yeah, just a little bit nicer looking than these air caps here. Unfortunately, this one tube got a bit bent. I'm going to try to carefully straighten that out. Otherwise, it's in really uh, nice condition. Now, this last one, well, this was a bit of a gamble. The, uh, the pictures were kind of vague on this guy. And um, the, the seller had a... Uh, Kind of a high price but he also had a make it now offer and there were only a few hours left in the auction so i made a that would seem like a reasonably fair offer about a third of what he was asking and he accepted so i got it what i think this is is the third of the three styles that i know of for the delta beam antennas and this is one that has a lighted base however i think i'm missing part of it it's got a nice heavy uh, glass base here and I think there's supposed to be a light down here. I've never seen a picture of one of these, I've only heard it described and I contacted the one guy I know of that's got one but he didn't give me a whole lot of info, <laughs> he didn't give me a picture of his either. What I think I will do is just rig up my own light. I th there are some uh, slots in the bottom here and all I think I need to do is just get like, well, a night light and just use some kind of uh, plastic cup or something and run an electric cord to it. And have a nice lighted base on it. 
It's also a bit floppy again because I think there's something missing in the base here that would make it more stable. It's also missing a cord, of course. But otherwise, it's pretty cool because it's just monstrous compared to the other ones. <laughs> this inner coil here is just ridiculously large. And I got one last antenna. This is something I've been looking for for several years. And I uh, had to spend a bit of money to get it, but not as much as I've seen other ones go for. What this is, is the very, very hard to find antenna for a predicted TV. I've got two. I've got a pr predict a princess that was in miserable condition when I got it, and it does not work. I started to work on it a few years ago and put it on the back burner while I kind of honed my skills on vintage TVs and I will get back to it. I, I, I think uh, it's definitely repairable. And then I have this Siesta that I showed in another video that does work although I have not restored it yet so I don't like to play it too much. But it was missing its antenna otherwise it's in really good condition. It's got the original stand all the correct knobs well technically these are replacements I put on but they're pretty darn close to the originals and the uh, the screens the, the CRT is in good shape the screens in really good shape it's a tendency to get kind of moldy or or crack and whatnot but it's missing the antenna I believe that the story is on these predictors is that a lot of them were sold to hotel chains and they did not have an antenna or it wasn't removed so they could wire it into like a closed circuit signal for the uh, hotel itself. Uh, so I uh, just have to pop these two screws out I believe and I can put this in. Before I do though I want to clean it up a bit. It's got some paint splatters on it and I want to polish up the brass a bit. And I'm going to save that for another day. I hope you enjoyed this installment of TV lamps and vintage antennas. That's all for tonight.